Welcome to this video and welcome if you're new. We are going out into the garden because I have one seriously neglected nook. I have a laneway that is full of overgrown pots which you're going to see. I have a section of plants where it has gotten more and more shady as trees have grown and it's just it looked good in spring early summer and now that it's the other end of the year it's just not looking fresh it looks messy I'm embarrassed by it and we are going to tackle it in this video I also have some satisfying power washing because I know you love a bit of before and after when it comes to a muddy spot so I stole my brother's power washer in this video for you guys it was also a bit of a wet one but I still managed to go out to the garden because that is my happy place so even if it's raining I'll still try and do some just put the El Renko on. So this is the messy area that I need and would love, I have been meaning to do this for ages, is to tackle this dry shady corner now this did look lovely in spring going into early summer but then it gets really dry here because of the trees above it even with all the rain that we've been having so I need to redo and adapt to this area but the first thing I'm going to do is I have I'm going to clip back some ivy there is clematis growing through the ivy so if you see here this is clematis winter beauty and it's growing through it which is lovely but I'm going to trim I do like ivy and it's quite good for the bees this time of year when it gives off a flower however I'm going to trim it pull up all the little self seeders and I'm going to yeah just clip back take stock of this area all of these pots just have self seeded trees in them I think I'm just going to get rid of pots from this area because it's a really shaded spot keep it clean use the pots there in the back or in the front. The bag of mulch, good old bag of mulch and a bag of horse poop. Um, I'm gonna put the horse poop on the roses and I am going, actually I might mix some of it in to the soil here and I'm going to mulch this area here after I tidy it so then at least it's ready for planting. But I don't wanna to go to the garden center until, I don't know, I research what I'm going to put in here that would be suitable for a bit of dry shade but then I need to remember that in winter the trees above it are all deciduous so they're going to lose their leaves so it's a bit more exposed in winter so if we get another wet winter I have to think of is it going to get absolutely soaked and drenched in winter they mightn't like it and then in summer they're going to be dehydrated um, obviously I can water them have the good old hose I don't use irrigation systems because I'm like listen we need to just plant for survival um, heucheris do well here uh, so I think I might do what I did in the other shady corner down the back so Brunner Jack Frost something for a bit of height just try and keep it a bit simple a few little woodland bulbs for spring and then once it goes towards this end this has way more flowers because it's in like full sun so there's roses doing well hydrangea annabelle everything does a bit better but i need to just tidy up this lovely climber i just need to basically tidy up this shitty section excuse my language and then i need to tidy up all these random pots i need to tidy this laneway and yeah just make it look a bit more tidy. I'm gonna share my gardening trick. I'm not even gonna call it a hack. If you're like me and you have an area that is looking a bit shabby, it's not looking too fresh, and you wanna instantly or within a few hours make it look better, this is my trick. The first thing I do is I will pull up any weeds that I can see. The only thing that's kind of weedy in this section is I get some self-seeding trees from above and that's because I just leave the leaves to like mulch so the little seedlings get trapped and then they seed. Because the soil is dry in this section they're really easy to pull up and most of them don't survive here. 
So I pull up the weeds, then I go and disguise the soil that's looking a bit messy. You can see that I mulched it with some leaf clippings and it looks a bit messy. So I am going to get some fine bark mulch that I, I normally buy a ton of it in the spring and it would only take me a week or two to shovel it. It has taken me nine months this year. <laughs> so I have some mulch left over in the bag. And straight away, if you put down bark in an area that you've just planted, it's going to look instantly tidier and like a million times better. Like you can see, I haven't planted anything in, it, in this area and it is going to look tidy, fresh. So I think if you can clear a pathway, take some weeds out, a little bit of trimming, like this could be a little Sunday afternoon job, but that's my trick for making something look instantly better. So if you have any, I don't know, autumn parties in the garden and you need to make it look nice, that is my trick. Mulch, weed, then mulch, a sweep, and you're good to go. As I'm going through this section as well, I'm just making a note of what plants that I have and which ones that I would like to move. As the soil is a bit dry now, I'm not gonna move anything. Um, just to give everything a better chance to settle in. I'm going to wait till about late September, early October. October is a great time to move things in the garden because they'll settle in over winter. They're going to get more water to let the roots settle in. You can also move things in springtime. But I find autumn is a good time. And there's not much, aside from planting some bulbs, there's not too much to do. So I'm going to make a note of what is here that I want to move. And then that will... I'd be able to be like, okay, what space have I got? And normally I go straight to the garden center and want to just buy something. So I think I'm going to give myself the pleasure of pause and actually research something that can go in here that is going to last and is going to deal with the conditions that are in this space. So I'm not going to go through the cycle of killing things and having to plant something new, but I think all good gardeners go through that cycle and there is the excitement of going to the garden center and buying something but I'm going to research what will go in here I feel like the shady corner that's in the back garden it's done really well with the likes of the Brunneries there's a couple of ferns doing well there so I'm going to yeah I'm going to plan the planting in this section and I'm going to pause do some research before I get excited and go to the garden center The past few years in the garden, I feel like I have been giving to it, as in putting plants in, sowing seeds, getting it going. And I feel like in some sections, I'm at the stage where I'm having to take from it. So certain things are doing better than others. Some things are doing really well, <laughs> like that climber who was literally climbing all over that rose. And I need to not thin out, that's not the word, but you know, you have some perennials that have grown bigger and then you lose some plants underneath because the light is getting blocked. And I feel like there's always something to learn and, you know, some plant might not be working well. Lighting changes, trees growing above, causing more shade. So I feel like this season... I have been clipping back a bit more. I know I planted up the front garden um, back early summer. I had some raised beds and that's really fun to do. But I feel like in the sections that are a bit older in the garden, I am finding I'm having to prune a bit more. So gardening has been less planting and more, I don't know, maintaining, maintaining. I know they're not as fun of a job because it's always fun planting and going to the garden center and you have new plants however realistically a lot of gardening is clipping back pruning tidying up keeping on top of it and I feel like they're the jobs that you know give the most impact and you know we need to do them
I just had to pause and hide in the doorway for a minute because there is a lovely rain shower, which is quite welcome when you have been shoveling mulch. I am sweating. Um, but straight away, it looks much tidier, even though we have a bit of a plant graveyard situation. <laughs> but at least I have a nice clean starting point when I figure out what I'm gonna put in here. I'm thinking something evergreen shrub in here for the bit of height, something nice. And then ground cover, which will probably be Brunner, Jack Frost, because it has a lovely, like, I don't think it's called evergreen, but in my garden, it only loses its leaf in January. And then it grows back quite quick. And come like April, it's in flower and it has foliage then until January, like it has foliage in winter. This section looks a bit tidy. I have to get back to sweeping, but I'll have to wait until last shower <laughs> it decides to leave. So something I have discovered, which is probably not news to my regular viewers, is I have way too many pots. Um, I probably have a bit of a pot problem and I've decided that less is more, especially when it comes to this particular laneway because now that it's pretty much mostly shade, a lot of things in the pots are just dying. I forget to water them and the thing, if I put like pansies or little annuals in them, because they're not getting much sun, they don't really do well there. So I've decided to just get rid of the pots from here. I'm going to empty them and I'm going to have to take stock of my pots. I do have some extra pots. Um, So you would have seen I did like a pot display in the front back in the summer. Um, and I had some pots because I was using them as like tele display pots, which was quite handy to have. But that has resulted in me just having way too many of them. So I need to take stock. And I think I need to, I don't know, I think I need to keep the really, really good ones, clean them up. And they can be in front of the greenhouse in those areas. And then the ones that are, I don't know, not as nice. Um, either see if they need to be recycled or I can give them away or donate them. I don't know where I do be going with all of these pots. Um, <laughs> the maintenance on pots as well, it's so much easier when you have a plant in the soil in a border because you can mulch it, mother nature waters it, you may have to step in every now and again. But pots, there's way more maintenance in them because you have to feed them once a week, well, during summer anyway. And you have to make, they dry out quicker, so you have to make sure you keep on top with your watering as well. Especially if they're a smaller size pot. So, yes, I do have a pot problem, but I am trying to keep it under control. So this laneway, I am just going for less is more. Keep it clear of clutter. Let the plants do the talking. And, yeah, not try and trip up the postman or the parcel delivery man with all of these pots and random things on the ground. And I think clearing it of all of the clutter and junk instantly just makes it look way much better, cleaner, tidier, calmer as well. For the members of our community who love a bit of ASMR, here is some three minutes of uninterrupted satisfying cleaning. In a previous video, I did do a bit more of this however most of the community said that they do enjoy the voiceover so I'm going to go with the majority and keep the voiceovers however here's some three minutes of cleaning for you
themselves straight away. This is much tidier, cleaner. Oh, a bit of mulch. I forgot how much. <laughs> I love a bit of mulching. I, I'm going to text Karen now because she just slagged me for mulching, but it is instant serotonin. But I know the path here is a bit uh, dirty from all the pots, but looks much tidier. And I even did the laneway here. The only thing I have left is uh, these are my garden centre buckets. So when I go to the garden centre, I just put them in the back of my car. So they're just there for the minute. But all of the other bits are gone. This is all clear. Uh, the leaves were actually kind of clogging drainways. Um, so leaves were getting stuck around pots and they were clogging some of the drains. So that's not good. Now, this would be a satisfying before and after power washing. But leave it with me because I gave away, well, I gave a land to the power washer. My OGs will know I stole that power washer in 2020 from my brother. So technically I was just giving it back. So I'm going to have to go steal it again off him. But I think, yeah, if it just had a little power wash, it would be very satisfying. But all of these kind of areas and like the algae and stuff. But listen, the thing of mulch, the bag of mulch that has been there for six months or more, probably nine months at this stage. Someone could have had a child in the length of time that that was there, is now gone. The sunshine has come out. Everything looks better in the sunshine. This is relatively tidy. I am gonna have to do a proper cut back on this, but not today, because all my compost things are full. But this is all lovely and tidy. And now I can kind of get my tinking cap on and see what I'm going to plant in here. Soil is a bit dry, even though there's a few rain showers. So I'm thinking maybe end of September, which gives me some time to plan. So yeah, once the soil moistens up a bit, plant them for autumn and then they should be thriving next year. So here is this angle. Much, much better than this morning, don't you agree? <laughs> and this, even though there's only a few things left in it, looks much tidier than what it did this morning. So it just took me a couple of hours, but it was, I don't know, one of those satisfying jobs. You know when you're just sweeping, weeding, doing all them things? I do have two, three canoffias in there, but I'm not going to transplant them to the front until soil moistens up a bit, and then I'll do it maybe late September, early October, I'll take out the things that aren't working so that they'll have a better chance of settling into the soil then if I move them when the soil isn't as dry. Wait for it to dampen up a bit. So yeah, I, I think I'm, I am gonna keep, once I clean the pot, just keep this simple. I don't need to have loads of pots here. Um, and then have lovely planting here and then that way nothing is taken away from it. You'll just see a lovely little garden here, a nice dry shade friendly garden. And then this will all just be clean. <laughs> I need to go get that power washer. I have just, Toffee must have heard me talking so he's here to inspect my work. Toffee also loves a bit of mulch because it gives him a nice even place for a bed. Oh, there's a lot of bugs actually on the ground. So I think Toffee's having a little scratch. So yeah, <laughs> Toffee actually sleeps further up in the bed in the morning because it's a sunny spot. He, but I don't know, maybe that would be a nice shady alternative <laughs> for him. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, I absolutely forgot about my potatoes. Forgot to water them, let them just. They did, uh, didn't flower, they grew foliage. This is what was left in the soil. <laughs> so I better bring them in from the sun before they go green. I'm after borrowing. I have borrowed my brother's power washer. I do have to return it. I stole it from his garage. It's actually a good one. Cause I was like, I'm not buying one cause I only need it for like this trip. So fingers crossed this works and let's do some satisfying 
power washing. <laughs> I could sit and watch videos of people power washing things until the cows come home. I don't know what it is. It's just so satisfying. Now, I always have, it's probably to do with the lack of light in winter time and just the dampness of Ireland. But I always get like a film of algae and grime in this laneway. Over the years, I've had suggestions from people like, why don't I just paint it if I paint it like black or, but to be honest, it's always going to need to be cleaned and it would, if whatever you use is probably going to lift the paint. So while it's not the prettiest, I think if I had, if I'm, I'm still waiting to win that lot oh, so I can buy the tiles that I want. But anyway, I feel like this would be beautiful um, with a nice little brick on it if, you know, money was no object. For now, it is the good old power washer just to make it look a little bit decent. You can get detergents and cleaning solutions that you can put on the pot to make it easier when you do go to do a bit of power washing. Because I have a lot of visitors in my garden, whether it's neighbors' cats, hedgehogs, I have loads of birds. I also have loads of slugs and snails. This is the M50. This is the motorway for slugs and snails in my garden, this little hotspot. So I don't bother using any detergents because I don't know kind of what's in them and I don't want to harm all of my little pals in the garden. I haven't actually washed this pot I think the last time we did it on the channel was like 2021. So it's long overdue a bit of power washing. There is a solution that I use on my greenhouse and it's called Algon. I used it last year on the channel on the wood on my raised beds. It's kind of like a, it's an organic solution. I think it's mostly vinegar that's in it. It's like a vinegar solution. It smells very vinegary. It's called Algon and you can stick that on paths driveways, wood, sheds, if you do have algae that you want to just naturally get rid of it. It does take a little bit longer, obviously power washing is quite quick. But yeah, if you are looking for a natural alternative, see if you can pick that up. I got mine from Pergola Nurseries in Cavan. I got it delivered, um, but I'm sure you can pick it up on the likes of Amazon as well.
here is how it is looking much cleaner than what it was at the start of this video if you're new don't forget to hit the subscribe button and for my regular viewers let me know your planting suggestions in the comment section and keep an eye out for later in the season when you can see what i actually put in this space and bring it back to life